All right, middle school, so what I have here is now jars that are old because they're from <laughs> the lab I did with um, seventh grade a couple weeks ago, but I've been waiting for Alka-Seltzer, which my neighbors finally were awesome and had some, so they shared some with me because I wanted to do something fun with it. And then I thought, hey, I could make Flipgrid Friday a thing, and if you um, respond to Flipgrid Friday with an answer to my question, um, then you too can earn bonus. So here's what's happening. In these jars, I just have liquids with different densities. Um, one of the liquids in here is just water, and the other one is vegetable oil. And then I think there's some mold in there. Don't judge. Okay, and then <laughs> in this other one, we've got, um, let's see, what was at the bottom? I'm trying to remember. But I think it's vinegar, actually, was the lowest density. Uh, I mean, hi, just kidding. So corn syrup was on the bottom. I apologize. And then we had our salt water and then our fresh water, which did stay separated for a long time, but over, turns out, a week and a half it separated. And then we have our vegetable oil on top. So... There are a few different things um, that are happening here. And so with the egg lab, we related the densities to why things were diffusing or osmosing the way that they were through the semi-permeable membrane in the egg, right? Um, but now we've all entered new units. So you might be thinking, why in the world am I asking um, doing this? Well, here's the reality. If you can find a way to connect this to our new unit, that would be great. So sixth grade, we've got kinetic and potential energy. So in the next um, couple minutes when you see some things, I want you to think if there's any way you can connect it to our new unit. Eighth grade, we are currently studying weather and climate. Um, so how in the world could things with density and or movement um, affect weather and climate? And then seventh grade, yours is a little trickier. Um, yours is human body systems, but turns out your human body is made with a lot of cells. And as we know, cells function through diffusion and osmosis. So you can probably find ways to connect with that. So like I said, these are just Alka-Seltzer. So Alka-Seltzer um, isn't anything crazy. Uh, it's actually a base to help calm down stomach acid. Um, but that's why it's designed for because acids and bases, eighth grade as we know, they'll neutralize to form a water and a salt. So if you have a lot of acid in your stomach coming up to your throat and you have um, heartburn, then you take Alka-Seltzer to calm down that heartburn because what you do is you literally neutralize it. So that's really cool. Um, but also, if you put Alka-Seltzer in water, it turns out it bubbles, okay? Bubbles releasing a gas, which is a great thing. Um, and so in the past, we've made little rockets with Alka-Seltzer in water. Um, there's lots of things you can do with it. But like I said, there's water in here and vegetable oil. So you can also make your very own, um, what do they call it, uh, like lava lamp, just through a simple reaction of Alka-Seltzer in water and oil. Now, the reaction might be a little slow because... Um, these substances are kind of thick, but I've been waiting to do it, and so I just thought, hey, I'm excited to do this and share it with the student, um, with my own kids, so I thought, well, why don't I also share it with my students? So as you can see, um, it's reacting a lot quicker in this mixture with all the substances, and so as it's reacting down here, as it's dissolving in the bottom, the bubbles are coming up to the top, and so that's that lava lamp that they're talking about. So you can get these really crazy, cool-looking bubbles. But also, if you could see the top of it, um, the bubbles in the top of this cup have a red tint to them. So they're taking that red food colored um, corn syrup and bringing it all the way to the top. So not just the bubbles are coming to the top, but also part of the liquid of the bubbles are coming to the top. It is happening in this um, cup as well, just not as quickly. Um, and it's kind of gross looking as it's coming up. But as you can see, it's causing a mixture of substances that are to happen. And so we're getting reactions in here that are occurring. Some may involve a vocabulary term we've been studying thoroughly in one of my classes that I'm kind of avoiding saying right now. So you guys can interpret it. But I just wanted to share this little simple reaction with you. If you ever want to make your own lava lamp, you can just use oil and water and other liquids too if you're studying density at the same time, um, and some Alka-Seltzer, which creates a simple reaction um, that produces a gas, and we know gases are lighter than all those materials, so they come to the top, and they start a mixing to occur. Um, so I'm going to also just do a little bit of a mix and see what happens here if we mix up those substances. And so if I mix it a little, um, notice the oil still stays on top, but also the extra mixing caused more gas bubbles to come because agitation speeds up chemical reactions. So we've got a lot of that happening down here. I'm gonna do the same thing over here, see if we can make this reaction go, because it doesn't wanna seem to move. Um, and now that I said that though, I remember the reason this one's not happening as fast 
is because that wasn't water and vegetable oil. It was corn syrup and vegetable oil. So neither of those things have a high water content, so they're not causing the alpha seltzer to dissolve as quickly. So we are having a much slower reaction due to that thick density. So again, tons of bubbles coming up here. Kind of fun looking. The, um, the mixture has occurred, um, and we're just getting that to happen. So anyhow, couldn't help myself. Science experiments are my favorite part of science, so I thought if I'm going to do them with my kids, I might as well do them with all my kids. Love you. Miss you. Hope to hear from you soon.